Hello and welcome to another episode of Joe's Knows NFL. This is our week two episode. Giacomo Imperiali joined here by Matt Friedman, Dominic Gribafina, and Richie Zangara. Have an action-packed week once again, fresh off of week one. So we're going to have um, a couple of our first impressions coming off the first week. Um, some overreactions, not overreactions. Just seeing and grasping a really good sense of the league-wide um, our opinions after week one. But with that being said, first up, though, have to go with our rapid-fire game picks. Going to be keeping track of our scores throughout the season. Have a little point system going. I, I know I'm currently in last by a long margin, so got to make it up a little bit this week. Matt, we'll start with you here. The New Orleans Saints who had a very impressive win against Carolina last week, traveling to Dallas to on the Cowboys. Yeah, the Saints and Cowboys both looked great. I'm going to go with the Cowboys. They're playing at home. I think they're a more talented team top to bottom. Dom? Yeah, I'm going to take the Cowboys for sure. Rich? Yeah, I'm also going to go with the Cowboys. Yeah, it could, we'll get into it later. Possibly a fraudulent win against an awful Carolina team, bottom five in the league for sure. I'll take Cowboys at home as well. That'll be a queen sweep for that game. Moving it on, though, the Las Vegas Raiders traveling to Baltimore to take on the Ravens. I think the Raiders are going to give the Ravens a very tough time, especially on the right side of the offensive line. Uh, but I'm still going to go with the Ravens at home. Yeah, I hope the I hope the Ravens lose, but I'm going to go with the Ravens. Of course, I'm going with the Ravens. Once again, another clean sweep here. We'll take the Ravens at home. Everyone trying to get those points this week. Moving it on, though, to the Los Angeles Chargers traveling to Carolina to take on the Panthers. Yeah, I mean, I think Harbaugh has the Chargers ready to roll. The Panthers are embarrassingly bad, so I'm going to go with the Chargers. Yeah, give me the Chargers. Chargers. I think this is the first time we've ever went clean sweeps, three for three. Everyone taken, I'd say, the favorite in all these matchups. Moving it on, though, here. Indianapolis Colts traveling to a unfortunate, unfortunate injury riddled Packers with Jordan Love obviously going to be out for a couple of weeks. Um, Indy traveling to Green Bay. Matt, kick it off. I'm going to go with the home team. I think the Packers win at Lambeau. I think that LaFleur is going to design a game plan to give his weapons the ball in space, force the Colts secondary to make tackles, which they really can't do too consistently. I think Josh Jacobs is going to have a big game on the ground. Um, yeah, I mean, I think Anthony Richardson will make one too many mistakes and the Packers win this one. Yeah, I'm actually going to go with the Colts here. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with the Colts as well. I really like Anthony Richardson. I like his performance last week. Yeah, Richardson with the 101 passer rating in the game against the Texans, which is, I would say, at least on par with the Packers defense. Obviously, they've been much improved. I've mentioned that in the preseason. Richardson only with one pick, though. His decision-making, like Matt said, did look a little rusty coming off the injury, but I still like the Colts traveling to Green Bay just because we don't know what Malik Willis is as an NFL player yet. So I'll take the Colts on the road there. Moving on, though, here, one of the most two disappointing losses for these two teams, the Cleveland Browns traveling to Jacksonville take on the Jaguars. I'm going to go with the Cleveland Browns here. I keep going back and forth, but I think the Browns are a better team in the trenches. The offensive line is going to bounce back, and I think the Browns take this one. Yeah, I'm going to take the Jags here. Um, I, I, they should have won the Miami game, but uh, their second-half offense was absolutely terrible. Um, I also think that that Browns defense, they got absolutely cooked by Dallas, which obviously they have a, a better offense than the Jags, but I still think that uh, that Trevor Lawrence is going to have a solid year this year and that and the Jags will win this one. Yeah, I'm also going to go with the Jags. Deshaun, I'll take the Jags here. Uh, I'm going to have to agree with Matt here. I've been going back and forth. This is honestly the game that I've been going back and forth with the most. I'll take Cleveland, though, on the road. I still think that defense is too good. Rough week one matchup against Dallas, I get it. I think they're just knocking the dust off, though. I think the Browns will finally show up in a low-scoring game here in Jacksonville. Moving it on, though, here, the 49ers traveling to Minnesota. A very surprising win for Minnesota. Not in the fact that they beat the Giants, but that they blew them out. Matt, we'll throw to you here first. The Giants, or excuse me, the 49ers looked absolutely fantastic last week. Uh, I can't really see them losing. I'm going to go with them. Yeah, I'm taking, I'm taking the Niners. Best team in the league, I'll take the Niners. Yeah, pretty easy. I mean, you could, another, you could debate fraudulent win. I'll take the Niners pretty easily on the road. Moving on, the, the Seattle Seahawks traveling to New England to take on the 1-0 and Patriots, something I didn't think that I'd be saying going into week two. I'm going to go with the Seahawks. I just think they're a, a better coach team. They have more talent top to bottom. Yeah, I'm actually going you know, with the Patriots here. Um, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not riding with a hot hand, but you know, I actually just think they're just, they're going to win this one flat out. Um, you know, I think, I think uh, Christian Gonzalez against DK is a great matchup, and and I mean, we'll have to see. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Seahawks. I think, I think they just have so many fantastic playmakers. I think they'll get it done. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to agree with Richie there. Too much offensive firepower for the Seahawks. Yeah, they they didn't look their best against Denver. Sneaky secondary there. I'll take the Seahawks on the road. I think the Patriots just are not a good football team. I get they beat the Bengals. Still my opinion, though. I'm not sold yet. Moving it on, though. Disappointing New York Jets Monday night football loss are traveling to Tennessee to take on the Titans. Yeah, I mean, I think the Jets bounce back here. Um, they'll win the offensive line in this one, and, and I have the Jets going on the road and getting a win against the Titans. Yeah, I agree. I'll take the Jets as well. I'll take the Jets in a bounce back. Easy sweep there. Titans uh, lost, and their opponent didn't even score an offensive touchdown. I'll take the Jets to bounce back as well. Moving it on, though, to the dumpster fire of the week, I like to call it. Uh, the New York Giants traveling to Washington to take on the Commanders. I think the Commanders have the better quarterback in this matchup. They're playing at home. Uh, both of these teams are terrible, but I'm going to lean Commanders here. Yeah, I totally agree. I'm going Commanders. Fantastic red zone game. I'll also go with the commander. Uh, I'm going to have to agree with the clean sweep here. I'll be there in Washington. Not looking forward to it. Uh, Gene Daniels actually did look somewhat impressive in his debut. Didn't look amazing, but didn't look awful either. I'll take the commanders at home to take care of that game. Moving on to a sneaky good game. Two uh, devastating losses for these two teams in week one. The LA Rams traveling to um, Arizona to take on the Cardinals. Yeah, I mean, I think this is one of the toughest games to pick this week. I'm going to go with the Los Angeles Rams. Uh, Stafford and McVay had that offense uh, off to a slow start against Detroit. Uh, I do believe they will bounce back against a really poor defense. But what really stood out to me for the Rams was that front seven, the young defensive line with Fisk versus Turner. Um, they looked absolutely fantastic. Byron Young as well had a great game. Uh, all those guys, either rookies or in their second year, they're continuing to develop, continuing to improve. I think they'll feast against a pretty weak Cardinals offensive line, and the Rams are going to win this one. Yeah, I'm going to go, I'm going to go with the Rams as well here. Um, you know, even though they have some injuries to the O-line and Puka, um, I, I still think uh, Cup and Kyron will, will will go crazy against that, that terrible Cardinals defense. Yeah, I'm going to go against everyone. I'm going to go with the Cardinals here at home. I, I Rams played some sloppy football um, last Monday night, Sunday night, but they ended up making it close with the Giants – Damn, I'm way off. Lions. Um, I I am a big fan of Kyler Murray and the Cardinals. I think they're going to be really fun this year. I'll take them here. Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with Matt and Dom for the similar points. I just think Rams have too much offensive fire, firepower. Minus the injuries, they'll get it done here. Moving it on, though, the Pittsburgh Steelers traveling to Denver to take on the Broncos. Uh, I'm going to let Dom do most of the talking here, but I'm going to go with the Steelers. Yeah, I'm taking the Steelers. That defensive performance was absolutely beautiful. T.J. Watt, best defensive player. Actually, best NFL player on the planet besides Patrick Mahomes. Um, so, yeah, we will get this done for sure. Unfortunately, Steelers. I'm actually going to go with my upset pick of the week here. I'm going to take the Denver Broncos at home. Pastor Tan looked really good. That defense really didn't look awful. I get Bo Nix did not play the greatest football in the world, but I still think that he can have a better week uh, better week two. And Steelers didn't score an offensive touchdown. I think that offense is still absolutely abysmal. I'm not sold yet. Justin Fields really did not look that good. I'll take the Broncos at home. That's my upset pick for this week. Yeah, Moving on though good. here, Sunday night football in prime time. The Chicago Bears traveling to Houston to take on the Texans. I mean, I'm going to go with the Texans. I still think C.J. Stroud is – I think he's going to make the jump to be a top three quarterback in football this year. Uh, we're starting to see him separate himself from the guys like Matthew Stafford, Jared Goff, Jordan Love. Uh, and also on top of that, Caleb Williams looks absolutely atrocious in his uh, NFL debut, continued to make terrible reads, incredibly inaccurate with the football, which is honestly something I didn't expect out of him. Uh, but, yeah, he was surprisingly worse than I would have imagined in week one. I don't see him getting much better on the road in Houston for week two. Uh, so I think the Texans are a clear pick here. Yeah, I, th I think this game will actually be pretty close, but I'm still going to take the Texans with this one. Caleb, the first primetime game, uh, I'm going to take the Texans. <laughs> yeah, easy clean sweep there. I'll take the Texans at home as well. Moving on the, to our Monday night football game before we get into our games of the week. The Atlanta Falcons traveling to Philly to take on the Eagles. I think that Kirk Cousins and the Falcons offense will bounce back a little bit, uh, but I still think the Eagles win this one uh, at Lincoln Financial. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. I'm taking the Eagles as well, but you know, watching watching Kirk on that back foot, he seems a little little nervous. He can't can't get too much power behind his throws, um, which I think was one of the main reasons why um, he had a terrible offensive performance. But um, I'm still going to take the Eagles with this one, but I think he'll do he'll do decent. 
best offense on paper, I'll take the Eagles. Yeah, I don't want to go too in-depth here as we'll talk about this later in the episode, but agreeing with Dom 100%, if you look at Kirk's stance in the shotgun formation, it looks different from his days in Minnesota. Clearly, the injury has messed with him mentally. His decisions weren't as sharp. He spent a little bit too much time in the pocket. I don't know how I feel about the Falcons yet. I still need to see more out of Kirk, though. Eagles, though, even though Jalen Hurts is rough, um, I'll take them at home, though. They just have too much going right for them, and that negates the wrong, though. Moving on, though, here we got three games of the week this week, a couple in prime time couple not in prime time that should be in prime time here. First one, though, is the prime time game tomorrow night. Or, excuse me, when this releases, it'll be tonight. Uh, Thursday night football, the Buffalo Bills are traveling to Miami to take on the Dolphins. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Bills here. I mean, we've seen the way that Sean McDermott and Joe Brady have this offense moving. It's a lot of pre-snap motion, a lot of pounding the football, letting Josh Allen use his legs, um, continuing to force feed James Cook up the middle. That offensive line has been great in the run game. And I think that the Dolphins are going to struggle stopping that run a little bit. They lose their two top run defenders from last year, Van Ginkle and Christian Wilkins. They didn't really feel the impact of their absence last week. I think this week it's really going to be felt, and the Bills are going to control the time of possession and eventually win this football game. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Bills as well here, um, especially with with Mostert out and um, A Chain not practicing. I think I think those two are are the, the main the main focal point of this offense. They're a, a run heavy offense for sure. Um, so, so with, with those two things, you know, I, I think those are, those are massive. And I, I think the bills will win because of that. Yeah. I'm also going to take the bills here. I feel like it's the same story every year. Um, I also want to note that the dolphins haven't beaten like a solid winning team. That's not the Cowboys on the road since September 18th in 2022, which was the Ravens game where they sold it. Um, but like watching last week, they looked piss poor against a bad team. Jags defense um, and a chain's questionable right now, like uh, Dom said, but I think that the Josh Allen show is going to be coming to Miami and they're going to win this football game. I think it's really simple. The dolphins haven't beat the Bills since like 1942. I'll take the bills on the road. They kind of just own the dolphins. That's how the way things go over there. Moving it on though. Um, this on paper should be a better game than I think it is, but after week one, not so sure Cincinnati and the Bengals traveling to Kansas city to take on the chiefs. I mean, I'm going to go with the Chiefs. Bengals obviously coming off of one of the worst performances I've ever seen. Uh, and the Chiefs, back-to-back Super Bowl champions, looked great in week one. Let's not complicate things. I'm going to go with the Chiefs. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to take the Chiefs by a lot here. You know, I think T. Higgins not practicing again. I just feel uh, – I mean, the Jamar Chase, I just feel as though um, the, there's just no good chemistry and no good morale within that team. Um, and I also see I also see clips on Instagram and, and TikTok of, of um, sorry, uh, Joe Burrow touching his wrist and, you know, flexing it a little bit. You know, I, that could possibly be an issue. So um, we'll, we'll see. But I, I'm taking Chiefs by a lot. Yeah, kind of a no brainer for me. I think the Chiefs will get it done, take care of business as always. Um, Bengals always kind of suck the first few weeks. But if you can't beat the Pats at home, you're not. I don't expect him to go into Arrowhead and do anything. Yeah, Mahomes is that guy. Pretty easily, I'll agree. Clean sweep, take the Chiefs at home. Last game, though, in the 1 o'clock slate, by far the the best 1 o'clock game, the Detroit Lions traveling to Tampa Bay to take on the Buccaneers. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to go with the Lions here. Um, although the Bucs had a great performance in week one, it was against the Commanders, very weak secondary. I don't think Baker's going to continue playing at that level. Um, and the Lions are just too good up front. They're going to control this game. Hey, I'll take Detroit. Yeah, I'm going to agree to disagree. Um, I'm taking the Lions as well, but at the same time, I do think Baker is going to stay playing at that level. Um, I, I think I think we saw Cooper Cup against against the Lions secondary absolutely absolutely fried them. So I think I think Mike Evans and Chris Godwin can honestly do the same thing. But I'm still taking the Lions here. Yeah, I'll also take the Lions' strong offense and improving defense. Um, I I really like how Jared Goff has been playing. It wasn't perfect in the first half. But in the second half, you really got comfortable. Uh, Tampa Bay's defense is going to keep the game close, but their offensive struggles could limit their ability to keep up with all the playmakers that Detroit has. Yeah, again, I'll, no, we'll go with another clean sweep. I agree with Don, though. I think Baker will continue that production. He is just He's really just has grown and gotten better over the past couple of years. I think he can be that guy at that level. He performed in week one. But I will take the Lions, though, just too much offensive firepower for that Bucks team to handle. 
With that being said, that's it for our rapid fire game picks. But now we want to go kind of round table. Let let everyone open up the floor with kind of their own prop. Talk about their own idea of their week one impressions of that first week. Uh, Matt, we'll kick it off with you here. What was your big one or two uh, week one impressions of a couple of certain teams or players? Yeah, I mean, so first off, I want to talk about the rookie offensive tackles. Um, in my opinion, coming out of the draft, I had Talise Fuaga and Joe Walt as the number one and number two offensive tackles out of the draft. I know. Uh, pretty unpopular to have Fuaga over Alt, uh, but it, he looks the part. I mean, he was a top five graded offensive tackle, according to PFF, in week one. He kind of anchored that Saints offensive line to completely dominating the line of scrimmage against the Panthers. Um, so, I mean, yeah, we're not talking about a guy that was a standout rookie. We're talking about a guy who was a standout offensive lineman in the entire NFL, one of the best performers from week one. And then moving over to Joe Alt, um, the other rookie offensive tackle, obviously, in uh, Los Angeles with the Chargers, he dominated against Max Crosby and Christian Wilkins. Uh, every single rep between those two, there were zero QB hurries, zero QB hits, zero sacks, and zero tackles for loss. Um, I mean, Joe Wall is already proving to be a superstar. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, those two offensive tackles have been absolutely phenomenal uh, in week one of their rookie years. And I also want to talk about Jalen Hurts. I mean, he led the NFL in turnover-worthy plays. He was 27th in passing grade, according to PFF. Uh, he actually had the lowest percentage of big-time throws in week one. I mean, statistically, you really can't get any worse than he was in week one. Um, this is, again, coming off of a very disappointing 2023 campaign for him. So, I mean, I don't really see how we can continue talking about Jalen Hurts like he's a superstar when he hasn't put up superstar numbers in about two years now. Yeah, before I throw it to you, Dom, I really just want to say as a depressed Giants fan, the it really just does show how good Saquon is by saying Jalen Hurts was probably bottom five, maybe bottom one in statistics in week one. He basically carried the Eagles to win over a really tough Green Bay team when Jordan Love played almost the entire game. He got injured at the very end of the game, so it really just shows how good Saquon Barkley is in carrying that offense, though. Dom, moving on to you here, what was your big week one impression? But the Browns and Bengals are fighting for the la fighting for last in the AFC North. Um, you know these two teams both played absolutely terrible. Um, the Bengals we saw Ramondre Stevenson run all over them, and and have many many problems on offense. And and the Browns I have, I have two words for them: Deshaun Watson. Um, that he is just absolutely terrible. Um, ever since they made that deal, it's probably been the worst decision they've ever made. Um, and, and they are just – I think both of these teams are just going nowhere. Um, it's it's really rough, but, but you know, as a Steelers fan, I love it. Yeah, and apologies for the typo on the screen. It is the AFC North, not the NFC North. I know that. Just my bad for the typo. Rich, here, we'll throw it to you, for, to you next year. What was your big week one impression? Yeah, I really like how Baker Mayfield played. Um, I would go as far as saying I think that – a little bit hot, but I think Baker will be a top – 10 quarterback at the end of the year. I mean, week one out the gate, 300 passing yards, four touchdowns, 146 passer rating. I mean, you can't really say anything negative about that. I mean, he's been fantastic. Buccaneers are the perfect situation for him. He, he's They love the, the quick pass game, the play action. He's limiting his turnovers, and he could cement himself uh, as one of the top QBs with the Buccaneers' offensive weapons supporting him. His experience combined – with his potential um, in his second year in the system, I think can elevate his status every single year. It really seems like Todd Bowles really has figured out how to use Baker Mayfield and get the most out of him. He's looked really impressive. I agree, Rich. I think if he keeps up that same production, he can be top 10 by the end of the year. I really don't think that there's an argument against that. I'm going to use my time to rant about this absolute dumpster fire of an organization. Um, I believe that the Giants are not only the worst situation in the NFL, but I think that they're the worst team in the NFL. We can all agree that the bottom two is the Panthers and the Giants. Um, but I, more situationally, if you look at it, yeah, yeah, like the Giants may have better pieces, but the Giants' strength and their biggest strength going into the season was supposed to be the pass rush. Shane Bowen only blitzed the front seven twice in the entire game, twice against Sam Darnold and the Vikings. I don't get how you do that. That is just absolutely abysmal. The entire coaching staff, top to bottom, was completely awful. Brian Dable reluctantly letting Daniel Jones throw the ball down the field. It calls way too many checkdowns, way too many run plays. There's no – it's just such a vanilla offense that he's running, and NFL defenses are really starting to read just how vanilla and how basic the play calling is. I do think the Dable can somewhat figure it out, but Daniel Jones, man, 
like the O-line really did not look bad. That was the biggest problem last year. Daniel Jones took the most sacks in NFL history. The offensive line did not look bad for the New York Giants at all. Daniel Jones' decision-making, absolutely terrible, cannot get the ball out. Just an absolute dumpster fire in New York. And when you look at situationally, they're paying Daniel Jones all this money. They they have a team that just really cannot compete, and they're in a massive hole when it comes to salary. They don't have enough money to really pay anyone in this offseason. They'll get a, t- a surefire top five pick, I'd say, this year for sure, but really just don't have a lot of building blocks to build on, especially if the defense is going to continue to underperform. The other thing, real quick, that I want to touch on here, I think the AFC South, we all knew it was going to be good. I think it's even better than we thought it is. You obviously had the Texans and Colts who played against each other. Both of them looked like really, really good teams, in my opinion. I don't want to say how far I'd say that the Colts will go yet, but obviously the Texans are Super Bowl contenders. I think that we could all agree on that. Richardson, as I mentioned before, a 101 passer rating against the Texans. He looked a little bit rusty. I'll give you that. His decision-making did look not as good as I think it will be, but just he... Coming off that injury looked better, even better than I thought he was. The Jags lost on a game-winning field goal against the NFL's most explosive offense last year on the road. I mean, I, I think that Jacksonville low-key is like a little bit underrated. I think that, um, excuse me, I I just I think that they're a little bit better than we all thought. And obviously, the Titans are last in the division, but they they if they can do special teams right, they're coming out of Week One with their win too. They, they lost to a team that didn't score an offensive touchdown. Simple. If they do the little things right, they're winning that one. With that being said, though, for our week one impressions, last segment here on the NFL show for week two, overreaction or not, we have a couple of prompts here, uh, courtesy of Matt Friedman, um, who brought these to the table. Matt, we'll start with you here first for your first prompt here. Should Michael Penix be starting over Kirk Cousins? I mean, yeah, I've been seeing this around, you know, uh, X. I've been seeing it on TikTok. Uh, all over social media. I think that this is a little bit outrageous as of right now. Uh, Kirk Cousins looked absolutely atrocious in week one. Do not get me wrong. Uh, But let's also keep in mind, this is his first game back from an Achilles injury. It's his first game in a new system with brand new coordinators, brand new head coaches. Um, Also, you're going against one of the best defenses in the NFL with the Pittsburgh Steelers. I, I mean, you're looking at Kirk Cousins, who was top five in almost every single quarterback stat last year before he went down with injury. I don't really see how we can give up on him so quickly when he had such a tough situation in week one. So I'm going to still ride out with Kirk Cousins. I think that this is a uh, a major overreaction. Yeah, I totally agree with you. This is over overreaction for sure. Um, I know last year he, Kirk Cousins did have a little bit of a turnover problem in the beginning of the year. Um, I think as soon as he as soon as he gets used to that Achilles, then I think I think he'll he'll be moving, but. If if it if he stays like this throughout six eight weeks, then then I say it's it's Penix's turn. But other than that, I think I think stay with Kirk for sure. Yeah, I agree. I do think this is also an overreaction. <laughs> Penix has showed he's shown very great and tremendous uh, potential at the college level. But Kirk Cousins is a proven, experienced veteran. Uh, he's consistently performed at a high level throughout his career, and I just think Penix still needs time to develop before being considered uh, a viable starting option over a veteran for Cousins. Yeah, I'll be quick. I'm going to agree with everyone. I, I just – I think that Penix, at some point, I think he should be the starter, but I think it's still too early right now. Kirk can easily turn his season around. Yeah, it was rough, but it's way too early to panic on Kirk. So as of right this second, yes, it is an overreaction. Kirk should still be the starter. Moving on, though, Dom, we're going to let you kick us off with this one. Are the Saints a legitimate playoff contender this year? Uh, I mean, only only time can tell. They played the second worst team in the NFL. Uh, I, I mean, I have to kind of wait until see if, until they play a, a a good team to really make this decision. Um, I do think I really don't think they are a contender as of now. But you know, if if they start to turn up against good teams, then it, it could change. I agree. This is an over. This is not an overreaction. I think the Saints have a strong defense and solid playmakers on that offense. Um, Derek Carr played well week one, obviously against the weak Panthers defense, but he still played one, played well in a weaker NFC South division. But I mean, I think they do have a realistic path to the playoffs if they mean if they stay healthy and maintain their consistency. Yeah, so so I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up three points here. I think that this is one thousand percent an overreaction. I don't think the Saints are anywhere near a playoff team. If we're gonna be honest, I think they're at best at 
absolute best. The second best team in that division. I think that they're the third. Personally, I still think that the Falcons and Bucks are both better roster wise. On top of this, NF or excuse me, PFF ranks the Saints as the third toughest schedule in the NFL for the rest of the year. If you look at the schedule, the only easy game they play is the Panthers once again. I believe it's in week 14 or 15. The third, the Saints are the third toughest schedule in the entire NFL. They played the worst def- or second worst, second or worst defense in the NFL, who lost their best run stopper in Derek Brown during the game. He's on the pup list now. They are not a playoff team. They blew out in even just one of the worst teams in the league. And once again, they have two teams that I just think clearly on paper and performance-wise are better, are just straight up better than the Saints. So they blew out a bad team. Whoa, I, I don't think that they're anywhere near a playoff team. Yeah, I mean, I just think that the AFC wildcard race is going to be too loaded. I don't see the Saints winning this division, obviously. I think the Falcons will bounce back. They'll have a chance. The Bucks look great. They have a chance. I don't really see the Saints beating up both of those teams to win the division. And then, I mean, again, I don't really see the Saints winning more than nine games at absolute most. Nine wins is not getting you into the playoffs. Uh, they had a great week one. The defense looks fantastic. But the offensive line is going to continue to fall off. As much as I love Talese Fuaga, the interior will not hold up like they did last week. Um, Trevor Penning is going to be absolutely atrocious. He's going to fall back to earth. Um, he, he didn't have a single uh, competent edge rusher come his way against the Panthers. Once he starts to actually face high-level talent, he's going to get absolutely exposed. Um, yeah, I mean, I just don't see the Saints as uh, anything better than an 8-9 win team. And with that being said, that'll wrap up our second to last one. Moving on to our last um, overreaction here. Rich, you're going to kick us off on this one. Will the Cleveland Browns finish under 500 this season? Overreaction. I think the Browns still have one of the best defenses in the league. Um, Sean Watson, not great, but I think they still have enough offensive talent to be above 500. Nick Chubb coming back and Amari Cooper will keep them competitive. Um I still think, yeah, their defense alone should just keep them finishing above 500. I'm just going to say, I'm just going to say, I'm agree and I'm going to agree. And Matt, I'll move it on to you. Uh, Yeah. I mean, I think I'm kind of 50 50 right now. I can't really give a definitive answer. Uh, It's really dependent on what I see this week out of their offense. Offensive line wise, they were uh, completely lost this, this past week. I think that they're much more talented than that. If the offensive line figures it out, if either Deshaun Watson or potentially Jameis Winston figures it out offensively at the quarterback position, then I could see this as a team that competes for a playoff spot. Um, If the offense doesn't get figured out, they're going to be the last team in the AFC North. They have the toughest schedule in the NFL this year. Uh, I don't really see the Browns having any sort of clear path to finishing above 500 if the offensive struggles don't get fixed. Uh, So I don't really have an answer for you right now. I know it's – it's not really much of a pick, but I can't really give you one. Yeah, I'm going I'm to agree with Matt here, but I do think they will finish under 500. Um, I, I, do, I don't think that Deshaun Watson will, will, will get any better as last year. He was, he was nothing special. And, and also that, that I feel like the Browns always just have many injuries every year. Um, so I, I think they'll finish under 500. And with Dom closing us out there with his under 500 pick, that will do it for us for us in week two on Joe's Nose NFL. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please continue to stay tuned. We're going to be pumping out NFL, starting up the college football show once again, and some fantasy content on the way. Thank you guys so much for watching, and stay tuned for more.